Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will talk about uh, some basic Android interview questions, which any uh, senior or junior Android engineer, Android software engineer, uh, will be asked in any interviews in any company. You know, like these are some core basic questions that you must know whenever you're going for an Android for an Android interview. So let's go ahead. Describe the build process in Android or Android build process, you know. So how uh, this, uh, these sources are built in Android. Uh, in Android, as we know that we can, we have these .java files, we have some resource files, and how uh, they are built. Uh, actually, I can show you first with the help of this project. You see, we have here an app which has this manifest file and there's the Java sources, this main activity dot java file and then you have these resource file where you have these layouts your values these strings your images here you know your icons and or images everything and uh, how then these java files or these resources everything is built into this final apk bundle is uh, is like it's, it's, it's a two-step process. In one, you have this Android Asset Packaging Tool, which is called AAPT, Android Asset Packaging Tool. This converts all of your resource files, these resource files that I mentioned, into uh, one uh, R dot Java class file, you know. And uh, and then you have this uh, these Java files, which are converted into dot class files by using this Java C compiler, and then these, after these dot class files, you have in different dot class files, and they are all then combined into one dex file dot dex, you know, using the Delvik or DX tool in S. Uh, DX using the DX tool in software development kit of Android, and this is this is this is called this Delvik byte code, you know, this dot text file, and and then both of these are combined. This R dot Java and this dot DX file, they are both combined to generate an apk final apk dot apk which is just like an executable on the windows and this apk can be then downloaded from the google app store you know which you don't see that so but it's the google google apps so google play store behind whenever you install an app you have a behind this google play store whenever you install something there is always an apk or you can simply manually you know download this apk or copy this apk on your phone uh, if you are uh, if you are using some website where you have some APK, just download it and just install it manually, you know. So that's that's the build process in Android. So what are layouts in Android? Uh, well, uh, uh, layout is actually, uh, actually a structure in your activity, you know. It's like, uh, uh, it's in an XML format and it's this structure in your activity that you see you know this this kind of a ui this this ui elements are contained inside this layout you know you have these buttons and those text views those list views everything is in this layout you know so this is the basic main ui frame you can say it's the frame of your ui elements you know inside an activity um, so uh, what do you have in layout you have uh, views and view groups you should say it was a mistake. It should be a view group here, inside other view groups. Or this layout is itself a view group because it has it's a group of view. It has a it has a lot of views inside it, and also you can have other. So what is a view? View is anything that a user can interact with. You know, it can be a button. It can be a text view. It can be an image view. You know, it can be anything uh, that a user can interact with, or you know. On, on 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 your on your layout or on your UI, uh, yeah. So uh, um, how can we kind of you know uh, 
make a kind of a diagram for this structure of layout and views inside them. Let's say you have a layout here and inside this layout you have views, you know, and then you have view groups also, you know, in this layout. View group is, you know, is a grouping of different views like different buttons or different text views or something. You know, view these buttons and text views, they are simply subclasses of the views. And then here you can also have another view and another view. So, you know, the layout is here. It's containing, it's a mother of all of these all of these children you know all of these children yeah so uh what are the different types of layouts we have uh, uh, linear layout web view relative view grid view list view uh, so what is a linear layout linear layout is one of the most simple you have simply you have the views and view groups arranged in a linear structure in it can they can be horizontal or they can be arranged also, uh, sorry, vertical, or they can be arranged horizontal like this. Uh, what is a web view? Web view is used whenever we want to, you know, uh, show a web page inside our layout, you know, so it will have this HTML, whatever content we need to kind of uh, show this web page, you know, or this, I don't know, this link to the web page. You can just have this link to the web page and it will be showed there. You can just place a container inside the layout for that uh, what is a relative view relative uh, relative layout sorry relative layout is very simple uh, but it's actually uh, it's used a lot because it's 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 more you have more uh, kind of flexibility you can define the place where views or view groups will be arranged exact place like you can have a view here then you can define you can have it below this one and this much spaces here you can have one here with this much spaces from this one and this much spaces from this one you know so you can really define the absolute or exact positions of your views or view groups inside a relative layout and uh, then comes the list view and grid view. So grid view is you have a grid structure like this inside this uh, layout. And you have can have many rows of this grid structure even, you know, this is scrollable because you can scroll and you can see other grids inside your layout, you know, which, which are at the moment not in this view you know like it's a list it's like scrollable up and down you can go you can have hundreds of grids grids inside uh, your layout uh, and then you have a list view the list view is a simple scrollable list you know in the form of rows you see the elements of the list of course this list can have anything it can have strings it can have numbers it can have other views inside it this list you know uh, so this is what uh, a list, uh, you know, you can have, of course, you, if you want to even show st show uh, different strings or numbers on this list view, you will add need to add another view here, which will be a text view, you know. So in this text view, you will add those strings and numbers, you know. So that's how this list views, list view layouts are. Yeah, so so that's how these uh, list view layouts are generated. So this, this is, uh, I think, uh, I hope you understood this well. This is just a, a brief introduction to the layouts. Of course, this whenever you are asked this question in some interview, uh, like what are layouts in Android, so you can describe all these things. You know, you can describe what they are and what are their types. What is Linux ID in Android? Well, as we know that uh, Android is Linux based, it's based on the Linux kernel, so it uses a lot of features of Linux, of course, because it is based on Linux. Uh, so it, it uses this uh, UID, you know, this unique identifier concept of, of Linux, you know, whenever you, you actually uh, 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 for, to each user in the Linux, the, the Linux machine assigns a, uh, a certain UID, you know, which is called unique identifier. Uh, and this unique identifier is, is as its name says, unique for each user and it determines what rights the user will have, for example, what resources the user can access and there is some system file in Android where all the list of these user uh, of, the, of the Linux system are listed, you know. In the same way, on an Android uh, machine, uh, whenever you install a package or an app, you know, 
a mobile app because it's it is, it's a package the, then it, it this app at the install time gets a Linux ID which is unique you know and uh, and based on this Linux ID the app you can identify which resources that app can use and also you can isolate this app resources with the other app resources you know so isolation means that you know the app resources the two apps when they run they don't interfere with each other you know so it's it's achieved because of this linux id because based on this linux uh, linux id the apps will run in two separate processes you know they will not run in the same processes and of course when the processes are separate they will not interfere with each other or each other resources you know so that's the logic behind uh, this linux id tree in in android and uh, let's go ahead another machine can of course another Lin android machine can give different linux id to the app you know so this linux id is will be it's it's not universal it will it can be f if you app if you app uh, if you install an app on a a mobile a it will can have a different linux id if you install the same app on the mobile b it will have a different linux id you know but it will be unique for that system so uh, that's this I already explained this Android feature uses this Android platform uses this feature of Linux and Android assigns unique user ID to each app you know so once again each Android app at the install time gets a lead uh, a unique Linux ID okay this unique Linux ID is used to identify and isolate the apps how it can be achieved because these two apps will run in two separate processes you know because of the, of the security features of android they cannot run in the same process because now they have two different linux ids they will run in the in the different processes and so they will remain isolated from each other what is an android manifest file well a manifest file is uh, is kind of a settings file uh, which has some you can say some settings for your app uh, and these settings kind of give directions to the operating system you know to how to handle this app when you start the app you know how what what happens when you install the app how how the operating system should handle it like for example you can define your permissions in this app like read write permissions or wi-fi permissions or reading the context permission or anything you know or uh, uh, what else like camera permissions or are sending SMS permissions, you know. So, uh, if you have these permissions, for example, defined in your Android manifest file, uh, then the operating system, you know, uh, knows or when your app will run, it will know that okay, I have to sign this. You know, this app is allowed to have to access all these things or all these permissions, all these rights this app has. You know, so things things like this. And also, uh, this manifest file also tells your uh, your operating system. Uh, you know this Android operating system uh, how to kind of um, like when the app runs which is the first activity that is to be launched you know so you can mention in this manifest file that this is my launch activity you know this app activity should be launched you know or or it what for example uh, you can also uh, register your broadcast receivers there or you can uh, you know your your background services and things like this you can also uh, define them or put them in the Android manifest file. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, if your system reboots, what happens? Your app should run at the reboot or not? You can also mention that you know in the uh, in the manifest file. So some whenever your system will reboot, some some broadcast receiver will fire. You know it will uh, and it will kind of uh, open the app. As soon as your Android operating system is, or your uh, or your mobile phone is restarted, you know, so these are the kind of directions you can set in this manifest file. It's an XML-based file, and it's of course it's a must-have for any app. You can store it in the in in your app project in the uh, location, or you can have it also external, but it should be at the same uh, location where your Android APK is, you know, so that because if the APK uh, is installed then it needs to you know kind of have this manifest file at the same level uh, 
what else this Android uh, apart from permissions and it also mentions build tool and which Android operating system under which Android operating system your app is going to run at which API levels your app is going to run the supported API levels you know the DLL dependencies of your app are also mentioned in the Android app manif anim uh, manifest file and as I've said before launch activity or starting activity services and broadcast receivers etc let me show you this Android manifest file in the Android studio the C uh, this is the app. This under the manifest, you have this manifest.xml file, and it looks like this. Here, I don't have defined any permissions. Normally, you will define permissions here above the applications. You have this your main launcher activity, which is this main activity is the main activity for this, you know, uh, for this app. So that's what an Android uh, manifest file is. I hope you understand it. What are frag fragments in Android? You know, what is a fragment? A uh, fragment is is just a component of an activity, you, you can say, you know. Uh, let's say this is our activity, this black thing outside portion is this is whole an activity. Uh, as we know that an activity is just like you can say whatever we wh whenever we we install an app and we see one page you know or one UI and then we scroll to the next one or we click some button and some other uh, page comes or some other user interface comes this each user interface is actually an activity okay but inside this one user interface you can have other small components of user interface you know which are called fragments these these are called fragments, you know, these, these yellow ones. This is fragment one, this is fragment two, and this is fragment three. And they are, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, childs of the activity, or you can say small user interface components, not childs of activity, you can say they are small user interface components that can be placed inside the activity, you know. So, and they are managed by an, uh, an Android fr fragment manager class, you know. Uh, so this is what uh, a fragment is, uh, is a component inside an activity. It's like a subactivity. And as we see here in this activity, we can have an activity with only one fragment, but we can also have an activity with um, activity with multiple fragments like here, you know, and multiple fragments can be in a single activity. Of course, it makes more, sun, more sense if we have multiple fragments inside the activity. Uh, has its own layout of course they have their own layout files like you have for activity we have x you have activity.xml file so for fragment one you will have f1.xml file you know just like small activities inside big activity f2.xml file you will have an f3.xml file in the resources you know so you have your own xml file in that xml file you you will define those linear grid view whatever relative uh, layouts you know just like you will have a layout in those layout you will have those buttons images and everything you know here like buttons images everything you will have it's just like an activity but an activity inside an activity uh, fragments also have their own uh, life cycle like this on start on, on create on start on uh, on uh, pause on stop on resume whatever just like we you have this life cycle of the activity but a fragment activity life cycle is connected with its parent activity you know if the parent activity is dead then the fragment is also stopped you know, it's also dead it's over so the fragment life cycle is connected with the parent activity because it is it is inside the activity so it is you know it depends on that but it has its own life cycle <laughs> Uh, if the parent activity is passed, fragment is also passed. Okay. If the parent activity is killed, fragment is fragment is also killed. So as I said, the parent uh, uh, fragment life cycle depends a lot on the parent activity life cycle. Uh, what are Android intents? Well, an intent is is some kind of a general operation. You know, it's some kind of an action. You can say. Uh, this action can be different of different type for example uh, you may want to move from one activity to another for example you click somewhere and you want to move from one act of maybe you click the login button you want to go into another activity inside the app you know something like this so from one activity to another between fragments you want to move or you want uh, 
uh, you know to you have uh, this broadcast intents for, broad, for broadcast receivers if you want to start a service or another background uh, service or something whatever so you need intents for this purpose and uh, uh, so what is the definition here intent is some action as i said some action or operation and is used to pass message between different components of course you can pass uh, any kind of messages strings integers whatever operations you know objects you can pass uh, uh, you know uh, using intents you can pass from one object for example one activity to the other you know in a simple way uh, so uh, intent is some action that is used to pass message between different objects yeah so intents are used for activities for broadcast receivers so as i said to move from one entity to uh, from act one activity to other or to pass and plus pass message from one activity to other or to you know send some broadcast intent for any of the intended broadcast receivers you know so you know, these are the two uh, applications that I have of course i also mentioned starting services background services whatever you need intents uh, types of intents there are actually two types of intents uh, one is explicit intent and the other is implicit intent explicit intent is when you for while creating the intent you pass the the activity you know like you with the name like the class for example activity main dot class if you want to come back to main you know you mention the name of the activity you know explicitly so this is called an explicit intent you know this name of this activity is mentioned that is going to handle your intent and implicit intent is when you don't know which activity your uh, will will handle your intent you know so you for example if you want to launch a web browser or something you want to open a website so the android operating system will you know uh, handle this intent in a way that it will uh, search for uh, you know an a browser app an appropriate browser app to you know uh, open this web page for you which you want to open using this intent so this is what implicit intent is you know so that's the two type of intents so explicit intents when explicit intent when you really know the uh, name of the activity class and you mention that and implicit intent is when you don't know the name of the um, name of the uh, name of the activity you just know you want to go to some web page let's say and you just say you want to go to this web page and then android os handles this intent for you like it finds the appropriate app to open this web browser so that's the difference between explicit and implicit intents what is the application context uh, we have two kind of contexts and an android one is the application level context and the other is the activity level context you know uh, so why we use the context the context is actually used to pass information from one component in the application to other component in the application or for example if you at this context or application context you know describes you the current uh, state of your application and the newly created objects or activities or whatever you know services broadcast whatever you know whatever components broadcast receivers whatever they they will get the information about the current state of your application using this application context you know and of course it's different from the activity context so because it is beyond the scope of the activity it is on the application level you know you can pass the context information from one activity to another or from one component to another component you know uh, what what are you using handles handles overall application environment so you have the overall have, have, have application environment it also resolves the resources you know and you can also have access to database and the application preference, you know, with this SQLite database or whatever, you know, the application level, because this SQLite database and preferences are also uh, stored on application level using the application context. You can have access to them, read, write to them. Of course, you can resolve resources, all of your, you know, application images or files, whatever. And that's what an application context is. What is an Android APK file? You know, APK file is actually, uh, it's just like an executable you have on Windows. You know, if you want to install a, a software application, anything on Windows, uh, you have an executable 
file you know uh, in the same way if you want to install something on an android device you have an apk file okay this apk file actually a normal user doesn't see because we have a play store for it and the uh, google's play store is actually automatically managing the installation of the apps we just write the name of the apps on the google play store and it when we click on install or download and it just installs downloads it and installs it you know on our android device but normally if you create your own app and if you don't put it on the on the google app store uh, for example if you create your your app using android studio you know so you will get an apk file generated you know so this apk file is normally uh, it's your compiled uh, android source files like these dot java files in android uh, which are all you know converted to dot class and then then a, a dex file is generated you know and all of those resources you know your images your you know xml files like android xml ft uh, android uh, sorry manifest file etc you know your the resource file so this uh, the a, a combination of your compiled sources and your resources compiled code i mean this combination of the compiled code and your resources is an apk file so if you create your own app using android studio and you want to test it of course you will have to install this apk file on your android device you know uh, in the same way some of the websites also you know they uh you uh, you they offer uh, apk download you can just go and download an apk file you know so it's and, and then manually install install it you know so some some websites also give an apk file but normally whenever you want to install an app on an android device you simply uh, you know go to this google play store and you just uh, you know click on the install and then the apk installation is handled by the google play you know it all happens in the in the background and you don't see that apk file but actually there is always an apk file behind this google play installation also because the android device installs those apk files so you know just like whenever you install something on on the windows there is an executable file behind that you know so this executable file is 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 running to install uh, uh, software on the windows so this dot apk is is then uh, this is kind of an executable for the android to device uh, android device to install the android applications yep so this it says here that apk file is has a package file format you know so it has a package file format because the android operating system uses this package file format uh, it is used to distribute and install android based apps as i explained uh, it stands for uh, android package kit so apk stands for android package kit okay so i hope you understand it's very simple you can just simply in word word or one word remember that it's just like an executable for windows you know it's just like you have an exe file for windows you have an apk apk file for android to install apps important question uh, what are the storage options in android well there are four kind of storage options so storage options in android uh, uh, shared preference sqlite databases external storage and internal storage so i will explain you one by one what are these uh, just a short description uh, shared preference is simply you know uh, it's like a file where you can save uh, primitive data types you know like uh, uh, integer strings booleans whatever uh, uh, and uh, you store them in key value pairs you know there is a key and a value key is always in string and there is a value corresponding to it okay? this value is always a string and there is a value you know which is your information of course the string tells you what information you stored you know uh it you can uh, use it to store your app preferences or or any information in in your app any important information that you want to save and load you know for any operations so it's like you can use it like a database you know uh or a simple storage normally people uh, don't use it for uh, you know they use it for simple storage things you know where you have simple key value pairs you that is what your need is you know not more or or, or the app preferences uh more uh, complicated storage you do in sqlite databases 
So SQLite databases are very similar to our normal SQL databases, you know, that we use in other applications. Um, of course, you need some SQL knowledge for that uh, to do those database operation, uh, operations. Uh, and uh, this SQL Lite database are actually specific to a particular app. So if you have one SQL Lite databases, then it's uh, available to and all the classes, you know, all the classes in the app can access it or you know whatever read write information, you know, things like. So it's like particular to one app. <laughs> and now, external storage and internal storage. First of all, internal storage. Internal storage is also, you know, app specific. Uh, sometimes you want to save, let's say, some large objects or files, uh, maybe some images, you know, uh, and then this shared preference uh, is just, it's not the option that you can use. So, or, or the SQLite databases. So you put those uh, big files into the file system, but this is also app, only your app can, you know, read. Or, or write that information not other apps can't use it that's why we call it internal storage but it's on the on, on your device file system you know uh, now comes the external storage external storage is different from internal storage as expected because it is uh, that it can be viewed by other uh, you know apps or you you can also you know read this information or see this information so you know the app stores in the external storage so other apps can also use this information, whatever images, whatever files your apps wants to store. Uh, but for external storage, of course, because it is not, uh, it's it 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 has some what do you say it? You know, it's something uh, which is not very app specific, specific, and it's um, stored externally. Uh, the information which others can access. So you need some info, uh, some permissions, you know, to be. To be given to your app to be able to do this you know and of course uh, you have to write those permissions in your manifest file and the user has to confirm that application uh, that those permissions when he installs the app you know which want to write some data on the external storage or read some data from the external storage uh, so that's uh, that's that's the the four basic uh, options uh, for storage that you have in android so as I explained before, uh, so shared preference, SQLite and inner internal storage, they are uh, app specific, you know, uh, they are more specific to your app and other apps or uh, other users can't see this information. Uh, uh, but external storage, it, it, it is, you know, uh, on your file system externally from the app and uh, uh, it can be accessed by you or by any users of uh, the app or uh, also by other apps. So this, what are the types of CPU in architectures in Android? Well, what is, first of all, we need to know what is a CPU, inst CPU architecture. CPU architecture is just a basic instruction set or, you know, memory models and exception models over the operating system, you know, and uh, in Android, we have uh, three kinds of uh, CPU architectures. One of them, the most common one is ARM7. It is, of course, because we have these small handheld devices. So it is optimized for battery consumption, but it is uh, among the other, it is the least powerful. Uh, then we have the second one, which is ARM64. ARM64 uh, CPU architecture for Android is optimized actually for 64-bit processing. Most of our new phones, uh, many of our new phones will have this ARM64 CPU architecture. It's of course much more powerful than ARM7 and of course then it has more battery consumption. That's why more battery consumption than, <clears throat> than ARM7. And then we have x86 architecture this x86 architecture is actually the most powerful it is more powerful than arm 7 and arm 64 of course it has the most that's why because it has more power so it's more battery unfriendly and it is then uh, optimized for of course most most powerful computing and then it is that's why it's also disused because normally common user don't don't use it you 
only here x86 normally you know uh, as the name of this third CPU architecture so these are the three CPU architectures in Android ARM 7, ARM 64 and x86 ARM 7 is commonly called ARM also you know we don't use the term ARM 7 with ARM 7 uh, the term 7 with ARM 7 you know so you just call it ARM when you commonly hear ARM it is normally the ARM 7 architecture it's the most common in the Android phones uh, but uh, the latest phones also have ARM 64 you know so what is Android Android activity context uh, already described about the application context so we have two kind of context application context and activity context activity context is of course within the scope of the activity only as long as the activity is active you know just during the life cycle of the activity this context is you know accessible or used it cannot be used with other uh, from the other components or other activities and it provides us resources within the activity so this is the difference between activity context context and application context so yeah so what is delvic well delvic is a virtual machine it's a virtual machine uh, in Android platform or it's available in the Android software development kit uh, just like you have a JVM you know Java virtual machine for Android we have this Delvic virtual machine to compile our sources and create our you know whatever APK files in JVM of course executables or whatever bins or libraries or whatever you know so uh, Delvic is just like uh, you can say a mirror of uh, JVM for Android operating system we know that Android is based on the Linux kernel it's a modified version of the Linux kernel kernel so of course we can use this JVM con con concepts also so this is Delvic is a kind of a, an optimization of JVM where uh, we create you know kind of because we know we have these handheld devices mobiles and tablets and they are very less in in uh, memory or uh, they have less battery requirements also so so we kind of you know create a compiled version of the sources which is more suitable for this handheld devices using this Delvic virtual machine you know so what's the process the process is uh, similar if you see here executes applications or software files written in android framework of course so the process is very simple you write some java files in android framework whatever in visual studio or whatever and then all these java files are converted to a dot text file using a text tool uh, inside the android SDK and then you also have of course resource files and those resource files are converted into using this AAPT Android asset packaging tool they are converted into R dot R dot Java files you know so uh, after that uh, you know this uh, this creation of uh, Telvic executables and this R dot Java files they are both combined this r.java and this dot text to create an apk you know an android apk you know this is kind of an executable for windows you can say this is an executable for android this apk is kind of an uh, similar to an, an an executable concept so that's what uh, actually this delvic virtual machine is doing it's just converting your source file and to these dex files you know compiling them uh, yeah so this delvic is also of course open source uh, the whole android everything about android is open source so that's it about delvic where are the intents used in android well uh, have described previously of course intents are used to switch uh, between activities from one activity to another back and forth 
uh, it's of course called explicit intent because you you mentioned the name of the activity. For example, if A1 wants to go to A2 activity, then you mentioned this A2 dot class, uh, you know, while uh, creating the intent. So you the, the you know the name of the activity that is going to handle the intent. That is called explicit intent. You know, so to to switch between the activities, you need you need you you use intents. The second is when you want to send a message between the activities or components, of course, they can be any other components. If you want to send a message, any message in any object form, string, integers, whatever, and objects, if you want to send from A1 to A2 activity, you need an intent. Intents are also used to start a service or a background service, whatever. They are also used to display a list of contents and intents are also used to, of course, send broadcasts and the broadcast intents, you know, to the intended broadcast receivers. And of course, intents are also used to open a web page from inside your app. If you are inside your app and then you will need uh, to fire an intent, you know, with the, you know, page address, whatever. And this is in implicit intent because you don't know how, which activity is, is going to open this because the Android is, Operating system is going to search in its, uh, you know, OS any browsers that are installed, and it will then, uh, you know, handle this intent and open this web browser for you. So this is implicit intent, of course. So um, if you want to open a web page from inside the app, of course you also need an intent. What is an Android emulator? Well, an emulator and or Android emulator is a kind of a virtual Android device. You know, if you have worked with Visual Studio, you wish you should know that you can, uh, you know, have uh, uh, using this AVD manager uh, in, in the tool uh, in the tool options. You find this AVD manager option, and if you click here, you can, you know, kind of create your own virtual Android phone device inside the Visual Studio environment. You know. It can have different API levels. It can have different device types and everything, you know, from Android 4 to Android 8, 10, whatever, you know, is in the market. You can create a virtual version of that Android phone device inside the Visual Studio environment. And that is called an Android emulator, you know. Of course, the advantage is that before you run your application, you know, you create an APK and download or install your application uh, on a real Android device, you can test uh, this. You can install it on the simply. You can, you know, while debugging, you can install this or running. Uh, you can install this on an Android uh, virtual device inside the Visual Studio, and this will tell you whether your device, uh, your application, is compatible uh, with the Android phone. Of you know, this is this virtual. This is this. You know. Uh, because this is a picture from the Android Studio, and I showed the virtual Android virtual device here. So, so yeah, so you can test this app on on different uh, Android virtual devices inside the Visual Studio, and uh, you this will tell you that whether your app can run on certain API levels or a certain device or not. You know, so before you run your application on a real device, you can already know in advance by running it on an Android emulator that this application is compatible for this device or not. So this is what uh, an, an Android emulator is. What is Android framework? Uh, of course, you can also be asked what is Android, you know? Android is, you know that you have this operating system on uh, the Samsung or some, a lot of common mobile phones, you know, except the, uh, uh, the Apple because they have an Apple operating system. So Android is uh, is an open source operating system. Um, it was actually it is it it is based on Linux kernel actually you know, and it was first developed by Android Incorporation. It was a company called Android Incorporation, and then after that Google bought this, and now it is further developed by Google and have managed and maintained by Google right now. Uh, and of course, the framework that is that is based on this Android OS, you know, to develop those mobile apps for for mobiles or tablets or any handheld handheld devices, you know, those uh, that framework, you know, with uh, which is used to develop those apps is called Android framework. You know, it is whatever. What is a framework? Just like all other frameworks, an Android framework. It it is a set of uh, APIs, classes, whatever you can say, libraries. You know. 
um, that can be used to write software or applications for handheld or mobile devices or tablets uh, and um, of course it also contains this software development kit because uh, so SDK is uh, is software development kit you know is the is the library of course where all these APIs are located and uh, of course, this Android framework or this Android SDK is based on this uh, Dalvik virtual machine, you know, uh, DVM, and it creates these .dx files, you know, after compilation. Um, these .dx files are created, first of all, this, this just like Java virtual machine, we our compiled Android sources are converted to .class files, and, and then there is one r.java file, you know, for the resources. Uh, or dot class files for our classes, you know, uh, and then it is converted to DX. This Delvic virtual machine is converted to DX. This is all what Android framework uh, is about, or you know, Android SDK or software development kit is all about. You know, it's just a set of uh, APIs, you know, application programming interfaces, you know, um, which we can use to. Uh, right, so some or, or libraries or, or you know to use or to or to write the software and these uh, these APIs and libraries of course help us help our app to communicate with the Android operating system and the Android hardware you know and then as I said it's based on uh, this Delvic virtual machine which is creating the dot dx file at the end you know or this apk file dot apk file which is the ex kind of an executable file in the case of uh, other applications java c++ or c sharp whatever on other platforms but we will uh, uh, of course talk about that in some other question but when you are asked this question what is an android framework you need to talk about that it's just uh, a set of apis which is used to write software on the android operating system you know and a set of apis or libraries you can say and uh, it has uh, uh, what you can say it has an Android emulator it has location manager and all those uh, classes uh, to kind of help any developer to write uh, and debug Android code you know of course this debugger this this virtual Android virtual device is a part of the debugger in the Android framework so this this is all these things that you you need to talk about yeah so that's it what is Toast in Android? Toast is actually a small feedback or a small pop-up message, like a kind of a tooltip, you know, that appears for a certain time and then it disappears on your main component, on your activity, you know, if you will, let's say you will click somewhere or the activity starts or whatever, for whatever reason, you know, you want to give users some information as a developer. So you will create this Toast, uh, you know, and then this small pop-up message will appear and then it will disappear after a small time of course you can change the time uh, it can you can make it a bit longer uh, the time uh, for which this pop-up message will remain visible to the user um, and this can be set using this toast length long or toast length short you know uh, property in this uh, toast dot make make text function it's it's somehow similar to this print app and C outs uh, in in other programming languages, uh, but it's uh, it's 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 a bit GUI based. You can say some kind of a text text message, but not like a text box. But it's a text message which comes and disappears automatically. You don't need to do anything to make it invisible. What is ARM7? Well, ARM7 is a CPU architecture for Android. Android has actually three main CPU architectures. One of them is ARM7, and it is uh, very best optimized for uh, battery consumption, you know. Uh, in the newer phones, now we also have ARM64. Uh, ARM64 is uh, another uh, CPU architecture for Android, uh, but ARM64, uh, has a very high battery consumption and of course it's very powerful than arm 7 but uh, most commonly used so far arm 7 
difference between explicit and implicit intents uh, explicit intents as this name says you explicitly in the intent when you define when you de define the intent or declare the intent or create an object of the intent you explicitly mention the name of the component which you want to call or name of the activity you know um, as see see it here like you call it like new intent and you put like this here for if you are in the current activity and second activity dot class you know that's how you create an object for the explicit intent and then you call it with start activity and you put in brackets you know this like start activity and you put this intent in the brackets you know this intent object which is created intent object whatever now implicit intent implicit intent is used when you don't know the name of the component you know uh, for example if you want to call a web page then you will simply you know simply like this you will create like again int object intent object new intent and you will you know whatever you will just put instead of this activity you will put here www dot blah blah you know dot com whatever you know and slash whichever page you want to reach you know uh, so how and you will here put some action view you will call some action to be done you know this tells the compiler that it needs to do some action on this intent you know so you didn't mention any name of the class you don't know which class is going to handle this which class is going to to open this web page for you so uh, when this intent is fired uh, this android operating system is going to handle this intent and it's going to find an appropriate uh, uh, web browser whatever it has on the operating system uh, whatever it's, it's its default it will use that to call this web page you know so this is what an implicit intent is so, you know so in the explicit intent you mention the name of the class that you want to call it can be anything it can be an activity it can be a broadcast receiver it can be a service that you want to you know call whatever background service you know uh, but in the case of uh, implicit intents you will not write the name of the class but you will just tell what to do and the android operating system will decide which app he wants she, it, it wants to you know uh, use to do this action you know like calling the action means calling this web page you know so so does not mention the name of the class or the component you don't know what to do but you know which component or app to launch yeah uh, but you don't know which component or app to launch you don't know what to do of course but you don't know which component or app to launch and you just mention the action in the intent and the operating system decides which app it is is is, is suitable for this task so that's the difference between explicit and implicit in so what are permissions and how are they set in android uh permissions why we need permissions first of all we need permissions because uh an android app can access your camera your it can send sms for you it can use your browser to send email it can access your wi-fi internet internet access it can access your wi-fi it can read contacts from your you know phone it can read and write to your disk so of course these operations are all risky and they are compromising security of the user they can compromise so that's why every app will ask the user at the start uh, whether he can accepts or rejects those permissions you know and and uh, why the app will ask because we have set in the settings of the app that uh, this app needs these 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 permissions, and uh, how and where are we setting those permissions? Which are those settings? This is this Android manifest file, this manifest.xml file. You know, this manifest.xml file in your project. This contains all of your permissions. Uh, before Android 6.0 and API level 23. Uh, it was enough for uh, us to just write the permissions let's say 
to declare those permissions that we are giving to this app in the android.xml file like read write this permissions read context permissions wi-fi permissions camera permissions that was enough but after android 6.0 android 23 we also need to you know uh, kind of uh, ask for those permissions in the code in the, in the java uh, files also so yeah because that's because we wanted the, that the user uh, we wanted to give user this uh, you know right to kind of accept or reject you know those permissions for the app whenever the app is is installed and started so this app will ask the user whether he wants to give this app camera permissions whether he wants to give this app read write permissions on the disk or read context permissions or wi-fi permissions and the user can select accept or reject you know so this uh, is the is an is, is actually uh, possible after android 6.0 before that it was just enough to write uh, those permissions in manifest xml file of course then it was very risky because uh, any peep any person who has some malified intentions can uh, you know put any kind of permissions and then access your personal private data you know using his app so you don't know what this app is you know permitted to do you on your system but now you know because you get this pop-up messages whether you allow those permissions or you don't allow those permissions you know so this is uh, about permissions in android